Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Niggas Needs, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be yet another reading blog, I know. I literally just recording a, a, recorded a reading blog and finished that blog, so you probably would have seen it already, just click the eye on the screen for that. So I finished one book today, and I'm starting another book, and I'm actually buddy reading this book with my sis Stephanie. You can click the eye to go to her channel and subscribe to her channel, support you guys, she's phenomenal, I love my sis. But um, yes, we're going to be buddy reading A Royal Dance by Linda Ferguson, Ferguson, Ferguson. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the first book in the Lion and the Butterfly series. And um, it's a trilogy from what I know. It's three books in a series. This is A Royal Dance. Then it's A Royal Family and A Royal Father. I have all three books because the publishing company sent them to me for review. So I figured with this buddy read, I would also do a reading vlog for the company so that I can share the links with them once I am done. But we're going to dive into this. This is biblical fiction. And I'm excited to get into this. So I'm going to read the back of this to you guys. And then we're going to start reading. <laughs> so on the back it says, Jerusha's father dotes on her and calls her royalty. A lioness who will one day dance before his king. She adores her father but cannot tell him her darkest secret. Instead of dancing like other Jewish girls, Jerusha sits alone plagued by guilt for a crime she did not commit. Who will believe her story against the word of the most respected religious leader in Jerusalem? Jerusha's fears... <coughs> Excuse me. Jerusha's fears are amplified when her Jewish mother, who was deceived by the high priest, forces Jerusha to leave her father's protection and live as a lowly servant in Herod's palace. Will the esteemed son of the high priest still want to marry her, or will Timon, her father's handsome apprentice, win her heart? Caught between the orthodox beliefs of her beautiful Jewish mother and her father's newfound faith in the Messiah, Yeshua, Jerusha is plummeted into a soul-wrenching family tragedy that leaves her with more questions than answers. Take an unforgettable journey in this first book of the Lion and the Butterfly series, walk the dusty streets of first century Jerusalem, and discover the chrysalis of hope for a new beginning through faith in Yeshua. I just read a book that talks about Yeshua and his family, and it was so good. So like I said, just click the honest screen to watch that. But I got this book sent from the same company that I just posted that reading blog from. So that's going to be awesome. I'm excited to dive into this. Um, I'm interested to see what scriptures they use. I know that this one uses a passion translation, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look at the copyright. Maybe not. I think in the other books, they talk about using the passion translation. So I'm not sure what translation it uses in this book, just because it doesn't say. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, books two and three say the passion translation. So, yes, I know that this has to do with sexual abuse, which is something that is... Um, Close to my heart, you guys have probably seen my testimony series. I have two videos out in that series that talk about it. But, uh, sorry about that. My son interrupted. Everyone is home. It is 7.13 as I'm recording this video. So, yeah. But, yes, it does deal with, um, sexual abuse. And that's something that's close to my heart. You guys have seen my two testimony videos in which I talk about depression and my experience with rape and molestation. So, um, it's something that definitely will be close to my heart. Um, I don't think it's going to compare as a pearl on the sand. But I do feel like I might give this a 4 or 4.5 stars. If it does get 5 stars, it's going to be awesome. But my sis and I are going to be buddy reading this, like I said. So we basically split this up into 73 pages a day, which is 4 days of reading. So for today, I have to read up to chapter 8, which is going to end at page 78. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to read, you're going to watch me read, and then I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts. It'll probably be late because, like I said, it's 7.14 right now. My son does have to go to bed in a few minutes. So we're going to get into that. Let's jump into the video.
so it's 9 19 it took me about two hours just because i was um doing things with my son before i put him to sleep and he's in the bed sleeping if you guys see the paw patrol um not paw patrol but the captain america blanket but he's sleeping um and i just finished reading and um you guys probably saw clips of me texting my sis Steph because, yo, first of all, the prologue, I'm, I'm gonna read snippets of the prologue, um, so the prologue is called In the Beginning, okay, and, um, it's written as if it's from the perspective of Satan while he is in the Garden of Eden, watching God create man. So, um, he says that, you know, from the beginning of time, he loathed her. Why was she the center of attention? True, she was unique and different from the man, and that intrigued him at first. But who was this creature? Was she destined to replace his previous position with God in such beauty? God created the world with words. He formed the man from the dust. But this one? This one was created from the side of the man. There's something about her. And then <laughs> he says that no one must know that I fear her. I fear her even more than man. Just look at the effect she has on both of them. Both of them being God and man. The effect that the woman has. Um, so then he says that doubt and accusation would serve him well. And that the woman listened to the doubt and then she would sin. And then at the end, he says, I will use the creator's own curse. He said that man will rule over her and I will use that to my advantage. I will entice the man to smash her into the grovels in, the, in darkness at my feet, both her and her seed. Then this world will not belong to the creator or the man and the woman. The world will be mine. Yo, that was such an eye opener. Um, we all know that Satan has this thing with women. He likes to target women especially younger women um and prevent them from getting to the purpose and um the greatness that god's god has for them and uh i just was like wow that 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 prologue alone was insane to me um and then you know we get introduced to jacob jacob is the father of jerusha and um his wife is abigail i have a little feelings about abigail right now because she she trifling she a trifling wife she's a trifling mother i do not like her whatsoever and yes i'm giving a little attitude because if you guys if if you knew what she did to her daughter and what she did to her husband anyways um jacob is such an amazing husband uh, such an amazing father he's such an amazing man i love him um we're introduced to simone who is um he's an orphan that is raised by the midwife um, the midwife took him in and raised him as her own because she's childless and she's also a widow. So he's an orphan and he's now apprenticing under Jacob. We are introduced to Jesus. Jesus is involved in his story. He is known as Yeshua in this story. And um, Jacob is friends with Yeshua, which I think is amazing because I literally just read a book about Jesus. And then I'm reading another book that includes him. Which I so awesome but um we're introduced to yeshua yeshua as always is such a humble man he's a very caring loving guy um in this you see him a lot more interactive with the kids the other book you saw him um just humble around his family members but in this book i'm seeing more of him and when i say other book i mean the previous reading blog you could just click the eye on the screen to watch it but um in this you see him more so around children caring children loving children they talk about his miracles and things like that but um yeah, Jacob is friends with Yeshua, which is awesome. Jerusha is this eight-year-old little girl, but she a little fast, hot tail child, okay? Um, I will say that um, the illustrations, me and um, Steph was talking about this. The illustration for Chapter 4 is, like, probably my favorite so far. So dope. Let me see if I can find the other one for you guys. So here is the one for Chapter 1. It's just a mom and um like a pregnant woman in a chrysalis the chrysalis has an important meaning within the story which is phenomenal um and i thought that every chapter would have an image but every chapter does not have um a kind of illustration so i guess the illustrations are 
key to the coming chapters that will be discussed. Um, so yeah, there's one in chapter one, there's one in chapter four. I don't think you get another one until chapter eight or nine. Yeah, you don't get another illustration until chapter nine, which will be, this will be the third one. I'm on chapter nine, but I'm not going to read it. I'll read it tomorrow. But um, Jerusha's such a sweet little girl. I feel like she has taken everything that her father taught her about being like royalty and an alliance. Um, she's taken a little bit too far, just, just a little bit too far. Um, she's a little bit pampered, just, just a little bit. Um, she's eight years old, talking about being married, like shorty, chill out. And then she wants to marry this 15 year old who is the son of the high priestess, Caiaphas. And let me just say, as much as I want to pop, I mean, when I say I want to pop her, like whew, these fists, like for real, for real, as much as I want to pop Abigail on her face, I really want to knock the heck out of Caiaphas. Like, I, I'm not even going to talk about what happened because I, I feel like what happened in the first eight chapters is like crucial and normally I like to spoil you guys but certain things I just don't like to tell you guys so <clears throat> my sister Steph knows if she's watching this vlog she knows because I'm glad Jacob got a few hits in them I will say that and Peter is Peter Peter is involved in this as well Um, you do see Peter and Philip in this book um, and also the scene with Jesus feeding the 5,000 um, five thousand plus rather um with the five loaves of bread five fish two loaves of bread or whatever the case it is but um yeah but peter is just freaking hilarious peter cracked me up to like <laughs> there was a scene where um jacob had went and told peter that i hit caiaphas caiaphas is a high priestess i mean the high priest and <laughs> so peter was like well the scoundrel he deserved it <laughs> So, and you know, Peter had a temper. Peter was the one that cut off the man's ear when they came to arrest Jesus. So, like, I just, I cannot get over Peter. I love the way um, Linda is crafting this story. She's taking fiction, but she's also taking biblical and historical accounts and weaving them so well. So, I'm enjoying it so far. The first eight chapters is crazy. I will say at the end of chapter eight, oh, my heart is crushed because um, Jacob is giving Abigail a divorce. Um, Abigail... I want to punch her in her face, <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like she's allowing fear to stop her from staying in a loving marriage. She's more so thinking about her protection. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with thinking about your protection. But at the same time, you're also giving up something that was God sent to you. So, I don't like her, only because at the end of this, she, she basically kind of lies just a little bit. It's kind of like, she tells the truth, but not fully, and it pisses me off. I don't like Abigail. I don't like Caiaphas. And this little child name, what, what is, who, what is this boy's name? Oh, when I say Caiaphas is petty, oh, Caiaphas is petty, petty to a T. Oh my God. The things that he was saying to Jacob in chapter seven. Oh, I want, ooh, ooh. I really want to tell y'all what it is, and I might, depending on the next day, how I feel, tell y'all what happened, but whew, I really just want to punch him in his mouth. Anyways, I'm trying to find this little boy name. Ife? Ifa? Ifa? I don't know. It'll be on screen. It's E-F-A-H. Ooh, that's K-A if it's the son. He's, mind you, Jerusha is eight years old, you guys. This little boy is 15. And as I mentioned, um, this does deal with sexual abuse, so she does get raped by him, and um, it's not just a one-time thing, it's a continuous thing, it pisses me off so much. But the way that Jerusha feels, I, I, I wouldn't even, well, I don't know, I kind of can relate to how she feels, because you guys, again, know my testimony, um, so it kind of is hitting and pulling on my heartstrings and stuff like that, because I've been in situations like that, but... Yo, now, now let me say I haven't been in continuous rape by the same person. Let me say that. Um, my experience has been with two different people in two different situations, but the pain and the doubt and the, the disgust that she feels, I kind of get. So, um, oh god, it just is pulling at my heart, you guys. This book, A Royal Dance, and especially the whole point where she was talking about how she felt different towards dance. 
Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a liturgical dancer. I've been dancing all my life. Um, hip hop, ballet. I took ballet for a few. Tap, jazz, modern, um, African. Anything you can think of, I did. I did cheerleading. I did dance. So like, dance is my life. Um, and there was a season in my life where I just I did not dance during the time of my depression and stuff because a lot of things weighed me down. And that's pretty much what happened with Jerusha is where her experiences. Um, weighed her down and it started to affect her relationship with her father it's not that Jacob did anything wrong but she felt so dirty and unworthy of being around her father so ugh, it broke me but um day one of reading oh my gosh this book you guys I knew I was gonna enjoy it just because of what I knew it was about but I'm thinking this might be another five-star read and I'm all for five-star reads all for it so i'm gonna just quickly update my goodreads and um i'll see you guys tomorrow which is the 17th hey guys so it is currently what time is it it's 12 40 september 17th let me show you guys quickly 12 40 september 17th tuesday and um i feel like excuse my language crap um i almost didn't take my son to school today um and i almost actually missed bsf i started bsf today and I never even got a chance to do all of my assignments for chapter one. And my church is actually doing chapter two. So now I have to do acts one and two for both BSF and for church Bible studies. So I'm going to work on that this week. But um, BSF was great. Uh, this time around, I am in a group that seems to be with um, older women. I'm going to say about their 30s and older. Um, last semester, I was in a group of like 20-year-olds, if you will. My leader was probably was definitely older. But, um, I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's not that many of us. I think there's about six of us. Six to eight of us, which is pretty cool. My leader is actually pretty cool this time around, so I'm interested in seeing where this goes. Um, but I feel like total crap. <laughs> my nose hurts. My body hurts. I mean, I know when I get sick because when I'm sick sick, my entire body hurts and then my teeth hurt. Um, and, you know, before it was just a cold and a headache. But now I have a headache, a cold, my back hurt, my legs hurt, my arms hurt, my shoulders hurt, and down to my teeth they hurt. So, thankfully my son isn't like sick sick, but he's been like hacking his, you know, sickness onto me, coughing. So, I I feel like crap. Um, <laughs> really do feel like crap. But I'm gonna read today. So, A Royal Dance. Me and Steph are loving this book, but it's kind of like inciting some um frustrating emotions because Caiaphas and his son Epha I don't know what his dang son name is but they are pissing me off Abigail is a terrible mother and a terrible wife and Jerusha is just dealing with a lot right now um we're at the point where Yeshua has been crucified um we were supposed to read up to chapter we were supposed to read just to chapter 8 but me and her, we, we had to keep going, so we went to chapter 10. So, I have 11 to 17 to get through today. Um, so, that's page 101 to page 53. So, about 52 pages of reading to go today. And um, I'm interested to see what happens next because I just... First of all, oh, I didn't even put my tabs in for the last two chapters I read. But right now, I think this is where she is. Yes, okay. So she had to um, be a servant at um, Aoife's wedding, which he mad petty. Like, you used her, you abused her, you raped her multiple times, bruh. And then you're just, like, over it with her. Get your life. Um, her mother is seems to be wanting to listen to Yeshua now. But it's crazy because Jacob, which is a father... Um, he was a follower, not a follower, but Yeshua was his friend, and her mother was, um, fearful of their family being reprimanded for knowing Yeshua, so she kind of, like, walked away from him. Um, I'm gonna just say it like that, y'all gotta read the story to know what I'm talking about, but, um, let me move this up just a little bit. But, um, yeah, she kind of, like, just was like, I don't want to be involved in that, she's afraid, let me move, fix this camera, sorry, guys. But, um, she was afraid, and then, lo and behold, you know, now that Yeshua has been, um, crucified, and she's now dealing with Caiaphas' bullcrap. Because he did her he did her dirty. Dirty! Oh my god, he did her dirty. Um, but uh, now she, you know, listens to Peter. 
um, because Peter and then John and them are prophets, not prophesying, but they're going about, you know, speaking about the resurrection and whatnot. So now she's a follower, if you will, of Yeshua through Peter, which is insane. But then Jerusha was like, I don't want to do, I, you know, I don't want to deal with that. And um, Abigail was like, you sound like me when your father was trying to tell me about Yeshua. So I think it's interesting to see that kind of mother-daughter dynamic um, that Jerusha is not acting like her mother was when they were still living with Jacob. Don't know what happened to Jacob. Hopefully he is not dead because I would cry if he died. Just saying. Um, what else? What else? Jerusha has officially said that she's not dealing with men anymore, basically. She's like, I'm not going to allow myself to be hurt by any other man. She's pissed off with her father. But um, there's a scene at the end of chapter 10 in which Kai, she's laying in the bed. And her mother has snuck out because I think she's sneaking out to go speak with Peter and them. So her mother snuck out and um, she's laying down. And she sees this, like, I guess she feels, I'm not sure exactly how it happened because my brain. But, um. Yeah, okay. So she's laying in the bed, and then she feels a hand slip down her robe, and she starts freaking out. And it's Caiaphas. Caiaphas thinks it's her mom, but, you know, her mom isn't there. She knows her mother snuck out, but she also couldn't remember because she just woke up. So now she's freaking out because Caiaphas is like, you know what, just come lie down. I won't hurt you. I've mistaken you for your harlot mother. First of all, Caiaphas, you're pissing me off, okay? Don't call her mother a harlot. Granted, her mother is a harlot, but still, don't call her that. And then, you know, he's like, come like that. So I immediately was like, Lord, please don't let this dude rape up because his son is already out here being a whole dog, right? But he left. You know, he left her alone. Um, her fa And she started to remember that her father said um, not all men have a lot, have hatred towards women because she witnessed um, a woman that was on adultery being, um, oh, sorry, stuffy nose. She witnessed a woman being almost basically pushed over a cliff and stoned to death for um, adultery. And her father is like, you know, not all men are like that. All men don't hate women. There are some men who just have that type of hate towards women. But he was trying to reiterate to her some crucial foundations to life that not all men are the same. Just like not all men are the same. So I thought that was amazing. Um, and she started to think about that. Um, she said that she closed her eyes. She reached out to her father's image and stumbled and fell onto the mat. Now, she's freaking out because, you know, Caiaphas is like, lay back down. Um, I'm not going to hurt you. But when she opened her eyes again, um, Caiaphas left. And, you know, she was relieved. And she asks us, like, why did he leave? Why did he leave? So, yeah, I'm about to read these next few chapters on camera. Um, I feel like a hot mess, you guys. I really do. If you guys can see my bed right now. Yeah. Let me grab my tissue. Oh. <sighs> I, I don't know why I get sick at the end of summer, you know? I think I got sick one time this summer because of my son, obviously. Um, but yeah, I have my pumpkin spice tea here. Um, it's not coffee. My teas tend to look like coffee because I drink black tea with the coffee creamer in it. But um, this is really good. It's really warming. And it's helping me to, you know, relax, so... And again, I apologize if you hear that music. I ain't got to explain how my brothers do. But, uh, we're going to get into reading. Y'all gonna see my messy bag for a second. And I have this hat on because the ends of my hair, if you guys can see, are, like, really, really puffed out. Um, and it's hard to comb out. Like, they, it, it's been getting tangled really quickly. So, I think I want to go to the hair salon. But then, I'm just like, do I want to wear my hair curly and just wash it? But I like my hair curly. I just don't have the patience for it. So that's a whole other story. But we'll see. I may rock my hair curly for a while. Um, and, you know, it's crazy that I'm sick because we got stuff going on this week for church. And I'm just like, I ha I'm heavily involved in this stuff. And I'm sick as a dog. Like, you know. So there's a party I have to go to. There's a service on Sunday. So... I'm just, I'm not feeling it. So hopefully I'm better at least by Thursday night. Because I don't want to be in church on Friday and um, Sunday sick. And then I have a client tomorrow, so. <sighs> yeah. When I say client, I do makeup artistry on the side. That's like, I want it to be my main job. But God has definitely pulled me away from that for some time. Because I used to make doing makeup an idol. 
I think I talked about this in a video, where I used to make that kind of like an idol. It was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't care about nothing else. I didn't care. Like, I, if I had a client to do on a Sunday, I was going on a Sunday to do a client. So, you know, God has been easing me back into makeup artistry. Oh, speaking of, I did get requested to do makeup for another client, too. So I got to text answer that text, but we're going to get to reading. Um, I don't have my... Um, yeah, we're just, we're going to get to reading. So I read to chapter 17. I just texted my sis, um, Steph, to give her my thoughts so far. But holy cow. Um, just, mm, just wow. So basically, Jerusha has now gone with her mother to these meetings with Peter and the other Jews and whatnot. Um, they basically talk about Jesus and whatnot. Um, Jerusha is just, she's real bitter. Real, real bitter. Um, like, she better as ever and granted she has a reason to be better i'm sorry i'm gonna lean back because my back is really starting to hurt and i need to mark these up with my tabs but she has become real bitter thanks to um caiaphas son ifa afa whatever his stupid name is um and because caiaphas touched her not like sexually touched her but he did caress her body thinking she was her mother so she became afraid and then she has this hate towards her father um which i don't get and then what I don't like even more is that she finally found out the truth concerning her father, why her father divorced her mother, why her father left, and what her mother was doing, and she still blames her father. Like, I don't get that. It's not your father's fault. Like, it was either save you and kill your mom, or save both of y'all, divorce her, and leave y'all both alone. Like, I ain't get that. Um, their bodyguard, um, Yogli, I'm trying to find his name. Yes, Yogli. I was looking for his name, but Yogli is a sweet guy. Um, he, I don't like what happened at the end of chapter thirteen with him, um, getting caught and flogged, and then I, he didn't deserve that. Um, as far as Caiaphas, Caiaphas is a greedy douchebag. Um, I wanted to say another word, but he's a douchebag. Um, now, what cracked me up was that Stephen was coming to Caiaphas' house a lot, and the multiple times that he came, he was paying Caiaphas. So, Jerusha already having his mindset that men are all evil. She's like, oh my god, you know, what is he doing with all this money? What is he going to do? So then Caiaphas tells her that they were sold off to someone to be concubines. And she automatically assumes that Stephen is a terrible guy. So her and her mother go to wherever Stephen is with Peter and them. And they go to speak to Peter. And Peter is just like, no, Stephen is not that type of person. He's a good guy. You guys don't know what you're talking about. 
I'm gonna walk away because Peter is, I mean, Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit and whatnot. So her mother immediately felt bad for judging Stephen. But, you know, Jerusha being Jerusha, stubborn and whatnot. And what I like is what her mother told her. Let me see if I can find it. I don't even remember what chapter that was. But, um, was it the end of chapter 15 or was it 16? Yeah, she said, um, you hurt only yourself by your stubbornness. And I'm just like, wow. When you're stubborn, not only are you, in a sense, being disobedient to what God is telling you, but you're also causing more pain for yourself. And it seems to be the case when, when we deal with a lot of emotions. Our, emo our emotions tend to cause more issues for us. So, I thought that was, like, insane. But, um, yeah, so, at the end of chapter 16, you know, Stephen is telling her what her father wanted. Her father wanted her. Well, Stephen had told them about Jacob a few chapters back. But now, um, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna stick to what I told your father. So he paid off both their debts, which I don't think Jerusha should have had a debt. That I don't understand that, the whole debt situation. There was no debt in the first place. Caiaphas was a scheming, dis like, deceiving monster, but whatever. But that money stuff, Stephen was paying off both of their debts, and then he was also following along with what Jacob wanted for her. And Jacob wanted her to marry, get a husband that was... Um, of God's people so enter Timon and we talk about Timon um, earlier in the book um, he's a 10 year old boy that Jacob was uh, like raise, helping to raise he was the s adopted son in a sense of um, the midwife Chaya and um, yeah he's a grown man now and there's like cute little scenes when they're like flirting with each other with, through, through the eyes and stuff like that but um, yeah they are officially betrothed right now and um she straight up blacked out kind of like in a movie when you hear like you're getting um engaged to somebody or you're gonna marry somebody and you're just like what and you black out that's kind of what happened at the end of chapter 16 so yeah i may continue reading today i don't, I don't know i may read chapter 17 to 25 because it's really good it's like one of those books you don't want to put down um because it's so good so I'm going to wait to see what my sis is doing. Um, if she continues reading, then I'll continue reading. But I am loving it so far. I need to add my tabs in clearly because I haven't been doing that. So all these pages right here, I need to put my tabs on. So I'm going to do that now. But, but right now it is 1.38. I am in extreme pain right now on my back, which is why I'm laying down. And you guys might be wondering why I have on a robe. I'm cold like... When I got up this morning and was talking to my son, he gave, because he gives me a hug and a kiss in the morning. He says, good morning, mommy, and stuff like that. And he tells me about what he dreamt about. Um, but he, his body was hot, but mine was cold. So he was like, oh my God, you're cold, mommy. I said, yeah, I'm sick. So I know I'm sick. Um, for me, you, you, Sinead knows when she is sick. Because one, her body gets extremely cold. I'm oh, like, my feet are always cold because I used to be anemic. I'm not anemic anymore, which is crazy, but I'm like, I still get cold quick. But when my body is like extremely cold, when all of my body aches, my bones too, when my teeth ache, um, when my nose is stuffed up, and when I have a non stop excruciating headache like I have now. So I have to go to Walmart later. And y'all pray for me. I mean, by the time y'all see this video, I would have already gone to Walmart. But pray for me that I don't go to Walmart and buy any more traveling notebook stuff. But like I said, I'm still going to hunt for that pink one. I don't care. I want the pink one because I like the weekly setup. But I'm going to go to Walmart and see what they got. Um, I'll probably snatch up some more stickers because I love stickers. Like, stickers are a plus when you're doing Bible journaling, Bible study, and all that. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to end this right here, right here. And I'm sorry about the glare. I just, I have to <laughs> lay... Because in the middle of my back. Oh, wait, this stuff text me? This stuff? No, this is not stuff. Who's this? Oh, this is about Bible study at my church tonight. But, yeah. So, I'm loving this. Like, oh, my God, I'm loving it so much. I'm so glad I have the other two books to finish the trilogy. And I'm going to binge read them. You will see a reading vlog for all three of these books. Um, so, yeah. I am loving this book. It's a lot more interesting. It's really, really fast-paced. Like, at the beginning, is very slow-paced. But then it picks up. And then it kind of, like, slows down. And then it picks up. But it's, like, a book that you don't want to put down. It's, like, you can literally read this book in one sitting. Just straight up. You can read this in one sitting. I'm not doing that because, obviously, I'm buddy-reading it with my sis. But we may finish this in three days instead of four. Um, today is the second day of reading. And depending on how I feel, I may finish. Because I'm, ha I'm literally, like, 50% through. Probably a little over 50%, but...
I'm just hoping that Darusha can learn to love, um, and that she doesn't allow what Ifa, Effa, whatever his name is, did, um, ruin her, uh, chance at love, in a sense, because like I said, I know how it feels, um, to be taken advantage of, and it definitely does mess up your mindset, it definitely does mess with you, and make you feel dirty, it definitely does, um, make, well, I've never felt dirty in my experience, but it did make me feel, um, less than, like, I wasn't worthy of anything, because I was, um, taken advantage of. So, yeah, I'm just hoping she comes to her senses. Um, I'm loving that her mother is not only owning up to her stupidity and she's becoming a better woman for her daughter, at least. Like, let's go. No one knows what Jacob is, but I'm hoping he ain't dead. Like, I really hope Jacob is not dead because that would crush me and I think it would be worse for Jerusha if he ends up dead. Um, so, yeah. I'm not sure if what Effa did is ever going to come to light. Um, I'm not sure how Timon is going to feel when they do finally get on the marriage bed. So, yeah. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know. But I love this book. But I'm going to end this vlog for right now. Because I'm in pain. So, I'll see you guys later. So today is a whole nother day as you could see from the last clip. I didn't get a lot of reading done only because my um, son's father was here. He was watching anime um, and then after my son got out of school I went to his house. I ended up taking a nap because I just wasn't feeling well. My son did have football, flag football practice so they he took him to practice and I slept. Um, but then when they got back we had to do a photo shoot and um, yeah so we did do a photo shoot. I did make up for a client. And um, he took the pictures. He's a photographer. I'm a makeup artist. We work together on some shoots. So by the time I got home, I was like super tired. So it is a brand new day. It is September 19th. It is currently 9.08 in the morning. And instead of me doing my morning devotionals, just because I feel like a hot mess um, and I don't, I, like, I didn't want to get out of bed. So I decided I'm going to spend at least an hour to two hours finishing up this darn book. My sis, Steph, has already finished. I think she finished it yesterday. Um, and, you know, she's ready to talk about it. I'm just like, ugh. So, I do have my morning cup of tea. It is tea this morning. Um, I'm just, I'm not filling up for coffee. First of all, this mug I got from one of my favorite authors. One of my paranormal romance favorite authors. But the mug says, reading is sexy. This is not coffee, you guys. No, I have been sick. I am still a hot mess. Hold on. And it's piping hot, which I love. I have two tea bags of um, the Twinings chai and French vanilla. I am not a chai tea person, but if you give me anything in French vanilla, I'm here for it. So we did about half a cup of this um, with two tea bags because I wanted it to be strong. And then I also have half a cup of um, the Cold Stone Sweet Cream Creamer to balance it out with three packs of sugar just because I don't want to be overly hyped. But, yes, so we have that and my lovely book. Oh, guys, I'm almost done. I can't, like, this is literally all I have left to read. All I have left to read is 100 pages. Not 100 pages, like, more like 90-something pages. Um, or 80-something, rather. 82 pages left, literally. 
81. 81 pages left to go, guys. Huh. So, chapter 24 is where I left off. Um, but so far, I freaking love Taman. Okay, first of all, in the previous chapters, um, they did get engaged. And, um, some things transpired because Timon had told, I, I think it's Timon, but, um, he told, uh, Jerusha that he wasn't going to force her to marry her. He would marry her if she wanted to, but, um, he always basically had an eye out for her, which I thought was a little creepy because, I mean, you was eight, no, he was ten when she was born, so, like, y'all got ten years apart, so you, a little creepy, I think she was eight, when she was eight, he was eighteen, so, I thought that was a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie, but again, I had to remember that this is biblical fiction. This takes place way back in the day when it was okay for an eight-year-old to marry a grown man and have children. Like, that was normal. That was okay. So I have to train my mind when reading these biblical fictions that back then their romance was completely different from our romance. Because our romance nowadays is you can be sexual with anybody and not be married. Um, people don't want to get married young anymore. They want to get married old. Whereas back in the day, they were marrying young. They were having sex young. Like, they were having sex only with the person that they were married with, you know? Um, and if they were out here having multiple partners, they was out here getting stoned. So I had to keep that in mind. But, um, yes. So he told her that. So Jerusha, you know, she spent some time trying to get her feelings and thoughts. Then she had a vision. First of all, before that, Simone had came and gave her, um... I guess it was a wedding gift. I don't know, because he got too many... He, he gave her too many wedding gifts for me, okay? Just way too many. Beautiful thing, but it, too many wedding gifts. But he gave her a jewel, and um, on the back of the jewel, it said something about butterfly. And um, the same saying that was on the jewel was the same saying from his dream. But apparently, they both had similar dreams, which I thought was insane. And that still happens nowadays, where two people who think they um, are in love and um, should be married, they will have... Um, two kind of similar dreams in which God is revealing to them that they are the one for each other. So I thought that was profound. That Timon and Jerusha both had the same kind of dream, um, but Jerusha still wasn't feeling it. And then when he left and she thought about things, she had a vision. And then Stephen came right after her and was like, I need to help you with your vision. Or I need to tell you about the vision that I had. And she's like, oh my God, I had a vision too. So I thought it was really interesting that she's having visions and dreams that both compare to Timon and um Stephen, um, I also like that they are not forcing her to follow Yeshua. She knew Yeshua as a girl. It's kind of like you know somebody as a girl, but then like they become this big popular thing. But you know the person that they are, so you're like, yeah, right, whatever. Um, so there, no one is forcing her to follow Yeshua, to believe in Yeshua as Messiah. And I love that they are. Everyone is telling her to do it on her own. That God will reveal it to her, in you know, in the time that it's needed to be revealed. And I think that's a beautiful thing. You should never force someone to believe in Jesus. You should never force someone into Christianity. Um, it should be something that is done on, on its own time. And you just pray that God reveals it to them and that they open up their hearts to believing and understanding. So I like that they did that. That was just amazing for me. Um, but whatever. They get married uh, because she found the gift that her father had passed on to her. Um, and inside of the box was like a letter written from her father, how he approved the Timon and um, how he wants her to be happy and yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. And um, so she finally says, yes, I'm going to marry him. So Timon and Stephen go off for about six months or so. Um, and then when he comes back, they get married. And then this is the scene. Okay, so they get married. They have the wedding. They go to their, their marriage, wedding, home, whatever. And I thought it was beautiful that he restored the house that she was born in. Beautiful. So he restored it. That's where they're living at. And um, back then, you would show off proof that your wife was a virgin so they would use white bed sheets and once they stain the bed sheet you would hang it on the outside of your door which i think is completely embarrassing honestly like what i don't need nobody knowing that i'm a virgin like but it's crazy how that's the mentality that we have nowadays where it's like you don't want people to know that you're not a virgin you know but back then it was important they celebrated the fact that you were a virgin but nowadays you're like sort of condemned in a sense for being a virgin and then if you're not a virgin you're also condemned it's crazy the world is insane but anyways um so she tells Simone um basically what happened to her and she doesn't get into full detail about it either she just says that um 
She says, stop, I can't do this. I'm sorry, I can't do this. He says, what are you talking about? She says, I have, I am, I am not worthy. You have not, you will not have bloody cheats to put outside the door. So, <coughs> she doesn't even fully tell him that she was right. All she says is that she can't do it and that he won't have bloody sheets. So he immediately gets into action. He takes the blood sheets. He goes to the kitchen. He cuts himself, wipes the blood on the bed sheet, and hangs it outside the door. And was like, they have their evidence now. So she's like, why would you do such a thing? He says, because I love you. You are my wife. Nothing will change that. I have a lifetime. Sorry, we have a lifetime to know each other. Please tell me what happened. And then immediately she's like, I just, I can't do it. So I'm just like, oh, Timon is so sweet. Because most people would not do that. They wouldn't protect you from that humiliation back then. Um, They would just let you be humiliated. But, yeah. Um, so I'm going to read. I'm going to put my ASMR um, bookish tea party ambiance on. And I'll link all the ambiance playlists that I um listen to down below. So you can just click... Um, Check the description box to see all the playlists that I was listening to while reading, but yeah. Okay, guys, so, <laughs> I cannot, so I basically read two chapters, 24-25, and, um, 24, I think, is when, yeah, so, 24, this is the next morning after, um, Timon did the whole cutting of the finger to help give evidence of her innocence, and, um, this is when she tells him what happened. And um, he's immediately angry, of course, like any man would be angry. But prior to that, before telling him, she had a vision of her, um, I guess, in heaven. And um, she saw Yeshua with a younger version of herself. And Yeshua was basically telling her not to be afraid to fully receive her husband because her husband is a gift to her. And I think that's important that we need to understand that when we are marrying for the right purposes and we're marrying the right person, um, because I believe that we all should pray before we marry anybody. And I also believe that you should pray before even dating anyone because God will reveal to you if that person is for you or not. Um, but unfortunately, we don't. We just jump into relationships. I know that was the case for me. I jumped into multiple relationships, even the relationship with my son's father. Um, we jumped into that after knowing each other for a month, um, which is insane. But um, even when we did get engaged a, a few months later, um, you know, I said yes. But after having my son, I had to, you know, take a pause on that and really try to understand if he was the one for me because I didn't want to make the wrong decision. And um, trust me, I've had conversations with God. Listen, we done had conversations. We had arguments. We done talked. We done dreamt. And, um, I believe that he is the one that God has for me. Um, but I always still have that conversation with God, especially when I feel like things are not going the way they should go. 
I do um, sit back, pray, and have conversations with God and ask him to reveal things to me because I don't want to make the wrong decision in marrying someone. And yes, my fiance and I have been together for seven years, but um, I never want to make that mistake um, because I know what heartache feels like. I'm pretty sure we all do. So I think that's, it's, it's important to understand that your spouse is a gift from God. If your spouse is not a gift, then did it then it ain't of God, <laughs> period. Um, if your spouse is causing you a lot of pain and hurt and... Um, it's not aligning with the vision God had for you, then that is not a gift from God. I'm sorry. No gift from God will drain you. No gift from God will make you weak. No gift from God will um, cause you to be depressed and sad. And I know a lot of people who are stuck in marriages that they don't even want to be in, but they made the choice and they don't, you know, so I think that's interesting. Um, but yeah, she tells him and you know, he's very angry, so she thinks he that he's angry with her, and he's like, no, I'm not angry with you, I'm angry at them. She's like, you still want me to, want me as your wife? And he says, my love has grown stronger each day from the first time I saw you with your arms stretched out, twirling, unveiled in the moonlight garden. Now, again, she was like eight years old, bruh. You was 18, so... Uh, but again, I have to remember, this is not, you know, our time. This is way back when, when it was okay, when men had a lot more respect than what they do now. Um, so they ended up doing a do, and I was like, hey, yes. Um, it was real cute. Um, but then chapter 25. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm over Caiaphas. At this point, you need to just throw him in the garbage can. Throw him in a volcano. Like, that's how I feel. He's irritating me. Because he pops up at the wedding. Talking about some, I'm looking for Jacob. The traitorer would not miss his own daughter, own daughter wedding. Where is he? Bruh. He might just be dead. Are you kidding me right now? So then, you know, Jerusha is like, well, he's not here. My father's dead. Um, so then she's getting ready to cry. So she turned her back to Caiaphas and she looked up at Simone and she says, that self-righteous pig will not see me cry. I cracked up. Like, I had to laugh. Um, so then I guess Caiaphas is pissed off again because he recognizes the necklace that he had taken from her and thrown. Um, so he's like idol worshippers. So Timon goes off on him. Timon went off and I, I was hype when he went off. I don't know if you guys saw in the clip and I was like, yes, but I was hype because Timon went off. But he also kept it together. He didn't let them know. Like he didn't reveal that he knew what Ephra did, Ephra, whatever his name is, Caiaphas' son. But the fact that him and his son showed up at the wedding, it's just like, bruh, y'all don't, y'all trying to ruin their lives again? Like, you didn't cheat, you didn't, first of all, you cheated on your wife, but it's okay for you because you're the high priest, right? You, you tried to stone shorty so that Jacob wouldn't say nothing. Then your son raped Jerusha and act like nothing happened, like, bruh. So then he threatens them in front of everybody, mind you. But what I love is that, okay, so Caiaphas is standing there with his son looking at everybody that's at the wedding and the celebration. And, you know, it says that Stephen and Peter moved forward and stood on each side of Timon and Jerusha. So I could just imagine this happening. Like, you're at your wedding and someone who you can't stand comes to your wedding with whoever else harmed you and, um... You have the two men who are like fathers to you, one on each side of you and your husband, right? And then you have all your other family and friends move up as well. So it's like a big squad against two people. I mean, it's not just two people because obviously they have like the, the soldiers and stuff like that, which pissed me off because the soldiers was, like, was making a hot mess and rampaging and all that at the wedding. Like, come on, bro. So Caiaphas is like, you're going to um pay for associating with this harlot and her wife. So, Timon is like, I like to give him more than a tongue lash. And I was like, yeah, she should have punched him in his face. Like, come on now. Should have decked him. Um, and then Stephen talks about how um, Jacob would have been very proud of both him and her. Um, so, what got me was that um, Timon was like, I know you don't want to hear this, but we must forgive him and Effa. And it's true. Forgiveness is important. Um... And I didn't realize it until I saw a few people's testimonies, how big forgiveness is. Um, unforgiveness can cause a lot of issues, and not just like emotional issues, but I mean, they can cause physical health issues, they can cause um, mental issues, 
they can cause spiritual issues. Like, when you don't forgive, that unforgiveness can cause you to get sick. And there was a video I saw. It popped up on my Facebook of a woman giving a testimony of how she was raped and abused. And she ended up, you know, becoming um, a prostitute and things like that. And how she had tumors and blood clots in her. And um, the doctors were not giving her a long time to live. And this is, at this point, after, this is, this is years after, and she becomes saved and whatnot. So she's, she has a faith. God has given her a husband that will love her and stuff like that. She has a blended family with her kids and her husband's kids. And um, I'm going to try to find that video and leave it linked down below if I can. But um, she talked about how she had a lot of unforgiveness against family members and things like that. And um, that God revealed to her that that was the cause of her blood clots and um, her tumors. So she went to the doctors. They didn't give her long to live because if they did surgery on one thing, then the other thing would cause her to die. So they basically was telling her husband she didn't have a lot of time to live. Um, and she said one night God revealed to her that that unforgiveness that she had was the cause of her medical issues. So um, she started to unforgive a few people and then the blood clots went away. But then she still had the tumor to deal with. And um, when she went to the doctor, the doctors were, like, amazed at how quickly the blood clots had went away. So, again, she started to pray and constantly pray and ask God to help her with her unforgiveness of certain people. And right after she was able to truly, like, let go and forgive people with all her heart, um, she went to the doctor again. And the doctors called her a miracle because they didn't understand how the tumor, and I think it was a big tumor, how it, like, disappeared so quickly, as well as the blood clots, and, um, that right there was an eye-opener for me, and even listening to, um, Pastor Michael Todd's preaching, he's doing the Crazy Faith, um, series, I watched, I think, the first two or three videos, um, but in Baby Faith, he talked about how, you know, God said that we are supposed to forgive 70 times 70 a day, so you're basically supposed to forgive a person instantly, you know, and whatnot, and he said how unforgiveness disqualifies, disqualifies us to have baby faith, um, because unforgiveness kind of, like, blocks you of everything, and if you don't forgive others, then why should God forgive you of a sin that you've done, or a wrong that you've done, so I thought it was insane, and I just, I don't know, that spoke to me, because for a long time, I had to deal, I've, I've dealt with unforgiveness, and I still have a little bit of unforgiveness in me, I'm not gonna lie, um, there's a few things that I truly need to honestly 100% let go, I'm about 85% there, but, um, some people I really honestly truly need to forgive, and it's hard to forgive people when they hurt you, like, it's hard, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's important, but, um, then she's like, no, I don't want to, well, he's like, come, my beautiful wife, we'll face this together, and then he said, I hate them too, <laughs> she's like, you do? So then he prayed, he said, help us forgive Yeshua, like you forgive the cross, from the cross, those who crucified you. So, uh, yes, but then what ha got me was that she reverted back, um, after he put her to bed, he just wanted to, like, caress her, and she reverted back to her old self of not wanting to be touched and not, um, being able to receive love, and it kind of crushed me. So, he's like, you know what, I envision beating Caiaphas merciless, <laughs> merciless. <laughs> which is like, oh god, Caiaphas is so annoying, him and his son are ruining everything, but, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the growth in Jerusha and how well her faith is going to be, um, built up, so, you know, but, I'm gonna get back to meeting. I'm on chapter 26, and there are a total of how many chapters? 33, 32. Yeah, there are a chapter of 33. 32 chapters with an epilogue, so 33. So I'm going to get back to reading. And um, you're going to watch me finish this book, and I'll come back at the end with my thoughts. I'm going to try not to come back in between anymore, because I don't, I don't know how long this video is. Hopefully it's not over an hour, but it just might be. But yeah.
Um, so it's 11.10. I really was done at like 10.45, but um, I had to answer the phone and make some phone calls and all that stuff. But, yo. I, 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 yeah, I. Mm, I can't do. So, I guess, I, okay, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to tab up my pages real quick and then come back to you guys and discuss because I'm still in my emotions. Me and Steph are, like, texting right now because, yo. <laughs> so, let me just tab the rest of the pages up and I'll come right back. Okay, guys, so. I'm done. Yes, yeah, so, my brother is up now, so you guys can hear music probably and him being silly. But, I finished this, and, um, yo. Right, I'm, I'm gonna just say, first of all, five-star rating. Five-star rating all the way. Um, this has literally sparked a new fire in me, um, as far as, like, dancing goes. I will be dancing to a song, I think it's called For My Good... And it's by Todd Galberth. And I'll leave a link down below so you guys can hear the song. Um, now, mind you, I just danced this past Sunday um, to... What was the name of the song? Oh, my God. Big by Pastor Mike Jr. I'll leave both those songs down below. Which, it seemed to flow so well with me reading this book. And then the song that I picked just flows so well with the meaning of this book. So, I feel like I'm aligned right now with what God has for me. And um, this, for me really hit home because the one it does deal with rape um so i could definitely relate to jerusha on so many levels and the whole thing with forgiveness and learning to forgive and truly forgiving uh, just oh my god it was amazing um and then the whole ordeal with her dancing herself out of darkness something i can also relate to because i completely had given up on dance um when i had dealt with the situations i was going through i kind of like stopped wanting to dance in the church um, and I started doing, like, more hip-hop dancing instead of more of, like, the liturgical dancing. And then the whole thing with the butterfly and the chrysalis just, when I say it sparked the fire in me, you guys don't understand. It sparked some ideas for sermons. It sparked a new passion and a new fire for dance. Um, so I just, uh, this was amazing. Um, Linda, I don't even know if she's gonna ever watch this video, but if you do, Linda... This was phenomenal, like, phenomenal. My sister Steph loved it as well. We both just adored this book. Definitely, definitely, definitely will be been, um, buddy reading books two and three. I do have book two and three. Sis has um, book three. She just is waiting for book two to arrive. Oh my God, just... It was beautiful. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. And I know these reading vlogs are spoilery, but I don't want to end this vlog spoiling anything else. So all I'm going to say is baby girl Sarah... Oh, the little boy Moses, just all the little orphans, that ending, oh my god. And then, first of all, okay, there's two things concerning one character. So this character's name is Yogli, Y-O-G-L-I. When I see his name, I think of Yogi the Bear. <laughs> and then I think of Mowgli from um, The Jungle Book. Don't know why, but it just comes to my mind when I see his name because of the way it's written. So... When I see his name, but yesterday my sis told me that um, there was something that was going to take place at the end of the book that was going to have me fall off the bed. You guys, I, I had to stop. Okay, so I'm like halfway done with my tea. I was sipping my tea and then, you know, Yogli was like, there's something I have to tell you. You have to know the truth. It's time. And I'm just like, wait, 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 wait a minute now. So <laughs> the things concerning Yogli. It was a twist, and it was a good twist, but I wasn't expecting it. But now everything else makes sense concerning. And then the things about her father, just, what? Yo. It's, it's, it's about to be crazy, like, I'm, I'm ready to read the sequel. But then, oh my god, I do have to say, at the end with baby girl Sarah. So Sarah is, um, Stephen's ne nephew, his niece. Um, and she's also the little girl that she was always in love with Simone, but she ended up liking, um, Jerusha as well. But, um, you know, after Stephen died, you know, she, she has this deep hatred for the Romans. I'm not the Romans, for the high priests and stuff. And, um, it's, it's understandable for kids to feel the way they feel. Like, there was a whole scene with the children, like, two, three pages that, like, pulled at my heart. Because it's like, when kids have to deal with death, they don't fully understand everything. And, um, 
you know, immediately they go to hate. And, you know, it was amazing to see Timon and, and Jerusha teach them things. And then after teaching Sarah, Sarah was able to teach the other orphans. And it was just, it was so amazing. But then there was a scene when she said that she wanted to speak to Jerusha and Timon outside. So, you know, Jerusha said, sure, no problem. Um, I'll get Timon. Just go sit at my father's bench outside. And I think this was the sweetest scene ever. And it just shows the heart of children like when god says that you really have to have like this child like humility Jeru um jerusha and timon go outside and sarah is like is it okay for me to call you guys ima and abba because both her parents died and she lived with um steven and then obviously now steven is gone um and then the whole scene with steven gutted me oh because we all know that he dies in accident he was stoned to death but um the whole scene gutted me and then caiaphas pissed me off because he wanted steven to suffer but Stephen was like, you know, Yeshua, I, you know, take me up. I give you my spirit. You know, he, he dipped out. <laughs> so it was God's way of not allowing him to deal with that brutal, that brutal abuse. And Caiaphas was pissed off. Like, he was mad. He was like, no, keep stoning him. And everybody's like, no, he's dead. Like, he, bro, he's dead. Caiaphas is just, <sighs> I know that there's going to be things that happen in book two concerning Caiaphas. And then I know that his son pops back up in book three which i'm not looking forward to like at all so this book was amazing and you know what i'm loving the fact that i'm finding a lot of five star biblical fiction reads that are not mainstream and when i say mainstream i mean like tessa afshar connie lynn cassette misu andrews um angela hunt um lynn austin like the, for me they are mainstream biblical fiction authors because those are the ones that we mainly hear about and read about but finding people like linda ferguson or um the one that, that i last read you can click the on the screen to see that reading blog by uh oh melissa rosenberger um they're not mainstream they're kind of like hidden people and i would have never known about these authors if it wasn't for boy and cpr um so i thank them so much for sending me these books i i can't tell you guys like the way that I, my, like, I really just want to get up and just blast my gospel music because I learned so much. Um, and one thing I will say is my, my first lady of my church, my senior pastor, she has always taught us that, you know, your praise, her and my bishop have always taught us that praise is our best weapon against the enemy. And, um, I definitely was able to see that in this book with the prologue and the epilogue because the prologue and the epilogue though they have really nothing they they don't really concern the characters but the epilogue kind of brings it all together and um i'm gonna actually read it because i i was like wow so i'm reading the last page of the epilogue not everything but i'm gonna read the parts that i um underlined so the first portion I underlined in orange and green, and its confusion vibrated within the enemy's den of darkness, initiated by the music and dance from the garden gathering. Now, what I text my sister was that um, it's crazy how dance can be used twofold. You know, the enemy uses dance for um, satanic, demonic uses. And when I say that, I mean, like, we know that, um, well, we heard that Satan was over um, the angel of music or whatever it was that he was dealing with, with music. And, um... You know, people use dance as a way to over-sexualize themselves, they gyrate, they twerk. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't do those things. I do those things for fun. But you don't really think about it on a spiritual level. And um, having read that, it's just like, okay, now I get the point of music and dancing within church when you're praising. Because your praise, it births a lot of things. Um, and then it says, each step to the music beats... Each step to the music's beat in adoration to the king released fiery arrows from the bows of the heavenly archers against the attempted advancement of the enemy. Before they could move, the woman's feet bounced, one, two, three, and when she leapt, silver swords flew from beneath her feet and landed in the hands of a reserve angelic army, a backup that Yeshua released through her song. Then it says, each twirl of the woman stands, diamond-like sparkles into the atmosphere that filled the garden with a glorious fragrance so then you have the serpent like leader saying no stop her the time is short destroy her love for yeshua make her doubt his love for her now do it and then it just says dance jerusha dance and yo it's crazy that you really don't fully get to understand how important and crucial your praise is 
in not just the utterance of your words, but also through your movements, through when you shout. And I never honestly understood the whole point of shouting, I'm not going to lie. Like, when I was a kid and when I was dealing with what I was dealing with in high school and college, I, I didn't care. And my bishop would always tell me to not hold it back. And I wouldn't understand it. Like, I just, I wouldn't understand it. And it would, I would just stay in that kind of depression and rut that I was in. But after the elevation service, I told, like, because, I mean, you guys saw the video. I was shouting all night. <laughs> like, all night. But, um, you know, now I fully understand why it's important for you not to hold your praise back, be it you uttering out words of thanks, praising God, or you busting out in a shout. It's very, very crucial. And, you know, you understand it, but visually picturing it after reading this, I was just like, wow. And then the whole thing with the chrysalis um, and how, like, God puts us in a chrysalis. And though it is dark and we have to be alone, that's the time when God can really work on us. And it, it really puts in perspective why you have those moments where you're by yourself and you feel alone. Because those are the times when God can do the work by himself without you interfering and without other people interfering. Because they did mention how, like, if you try to help a butterfly out of its chrysalis, you end up doing harm to it. And that's kind of how it is with us when we are in this dark moment in life and um, we know we're supposed to be alone, but we don't want to be alone. So we try to get help from family members and help from friends. That help doesn't help us. You know, it, it causes more harm. So I just, my heart is just over overjoyed right now. Like, I can't, do, like, it, I don't know how to explain how, like, I feel. Um, This book really is, like, it's up there right now with Pearl in the Sand. It's not Pearl in the Sand for me. It might be right up under there. So it, it just might be. And um, the reason why those two books are, like, crucial for me is because I've experienced what the characters have experienced and um it ministers to me in such a great way and uh it, it, this whole reading experience was amazing like it really puts me in that kind of Tessa Afshar kind of mode um reading this book and it's it's phenomenal like so I'm excited to see what goes on for Jerusha and Timone and with I know Kaif has done some dumb stuff and the sequel and then i know like i said her son pop his son pops up in the third book so i'm excited to continue on following jerusha with her journey and um with abigail and jacob is not dead okay jacob is not her dead her father is not dead that's a whole nother thing because the whole thing with yogli and the secrets and just <sighs> i'm over it you guys in a good way so that is it for this reading vlog um there will be another reading vlog for the sequel of this which i believe is called a royal family so that book will be coming soon um i'm probably gonna take a week just to read other books that i have to read for reviews and then get back to that because i don't want to read them back to back to back because i'm probably gonna be like over overwhelmed reading too much jerusha um but yo this book was amazing i highly recommend it you guys will definitely 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 totally enjoy it and um it gets a little bit slow paced, but it definitely picks up when it needs to. And it's one of those books you can literally just fly through in a day. Um, but totally loved it. Totally recommend it. Um, I will leave links down below so you can get it off of Amazon, the paperback, as well as the ebook. And um, that's pretty much it for this reading vlog. So thank you guys for staying tuned of this reading vlog. I hope this reading vlog was edited down to less than an hour. Because um, you guys know my reading vlogs, are, they, they tend to be long. But um, yeah, that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you are subscribed, hit the little bell to stay notified. Leave your comments. And if you want to discuss this book, leave them down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.